I hope I don't slip, guys. Oh, hey guys, welcome back to Coaster Brothers. Um, right now I'm in Antarctica, guys. I'm freezing. There's ice around me. Maybe we need to break the ice, which is why today we are doing an icebreaker review, guys. So, Icebreaker, if you don't know, is a brand new Premier Rides multi-launch roller coaster that just opened at SeaWorld Orlando. Now, this is a coaster that is on the tamer side, but I just got to ride it, and today I am going to be reviewing it for you guys. So, let's get into it. Our first category is height. Now, Icebreaker stands at 93 feet, which isn't very impressive, though it gets to that speed from its launches, guys. But because this is not a very impressive height at 93 feet, I am going to be rating Icebreaker on height a 7. Next, we have speed. Icebreaker travers, travels at 53 miles per hour. Again, a not a very impressive number to talk about. It reaches that speed from its um it reaches that speed from its four launches, guys. Two launches backwards, two launches forward. And guys, these are very gradual launches. They're not very fast. Um but speed really guys, there's nothing to talk about here. Um so I'm gonna be rating speed another seven now we have the drop guys this drop is honestly a very good drop it's an 80 degree drop and with that drop you get um you get whipped out of your seat no matter where you are unless you're in the very front you're not going to really get whipped out of your seat but if you're in the back you're going to get a strong whip on that drop so for drop i'm going to be giving an 8.5 Next, we have our launches. There are a total of four launches on Icebreaker. Two that bring you backward, the first one being a backwards launch, and then two that bring you forward. And as you know, with most Premier Rides roller coasters, these launches are pretty gradual. The first one brings you to about 20 miles per hour. The second one then brings you to about 30 miles per hour. Third one, 40 and then fourth one, 50 miles per hour, which is the top speed. Um, and guys, it's unfortunate that these launches are so gradual because there is really no force to talk about with these launches. And it's, it's just kind of upsetting, to be honest. There's a little bit of a letdown. I was kind of expecting a little more from these launches, but um, it didn't meet my expectations. So th these are just pretty average launches. I'm going to give a five. Our next category is airtime, and this is a category that Icebreaker definitely stands out in. Icebreaker has a bunch of airtime-filled moments, like those two airtime hills after the launch, the airtime hill going into the gigantic 100-degree spike, then out into the launch, then into another airtime hill up over the top hat, and then down, you get airtime on that. You get airtime right here over another airtime hill and another airtime hill. Then you go up, over, and then you go into a wave turn, which you do get airtime on because you get a little bit of floater there. And then you go into one last airtime hill, and then you get a little bit of airtime going into the break run. So guys, Icebreaker has like 12, I think, 12 airtime moments, which is pretty good. So for airtime, guys, I'm going to be giving a 9. Next, we're going to be talking about the overall layout. So with Icebreaker, you first roll out of the station into this, into this switch track. Once you reach the end of the switch track, the track will, of course, switch over from the station section to the launch section. After switching over, you're gonna wait a sec, and then you're gonna go backwards, launch backwards, up into the first airtime hill, and then halfway up the spike, and you're gonna go back down over the airtime hill, have the second launch, 
over another airtime hill, halfway up the top hat. Then you go back over that same airtime hill, you're going to do stronger backwards launch, do another airtime hill, and then your highest peak of the spike. Then back over this airtime hill, you're going to get a lot of airtime on that. Over the next airtime hill, a lot more airtime. And then over the top hat. After dropping down the top hat, you're going to curve over two airtime hills. You're going to go up and over here. You're going to turn. Go into a wave turn right here. And go into another like wave turny thing. Then another airtime hill, and then into the brakes. And what I find interesting is that because they added that switch track, it allows them to operate more than one train. So I'm pretty sure they operate two trains. Yeah, they operate two trains. Um, but yeah, I just find that really interesting and really cool. So for all our layout, it, it does have a pretty strong layout. I'm going to be giving a 9. Next, we have smoothness. And guys, this is actually where Iceberger truly really stands out. I don't remember... I don't remember a single rough patch in this coaster. It is ha it hit it has been like one or two weeks I remember, but um at least since I wrote it, but I don't remember any roughness in this coaster, guys. It should feel a little like um I don't know how to explain it really, guys, but I don't remember this being like unbearably rough or anything. It wouldn't be enough to ruin a perspective of a ride and to not to enjoy the ride. So I'm going to be giving a 10 for smoothness. Just because it's smooth, however, doesn't mean it has good trains. Icebreaker has the classic Premier Rides trains, which I personally do not like. These trains, these trains are crammed. There's not a lot of leg room. It's very hard to get into the trains. And most importantly, it has the very, very, very unnecessary comfort collars, which make for a little bit more of an uncomfortable ride. You don't get headbanging, but it does kind of hurt your neck, and the restraints are very crammed up against your legs, um, and these seats are just kind of painful. It's not the end of the world, though. It doesn't hurt too much. It, you're just going to be kind of crammed in there. So for restraints, I'm going to be giving a six. Now, the operations on Icebreaker are not the best. Probably the worst in the park. When I went, each dispatch took two minutes or more. Two to four minutes for each dispatching train. Now, this may just be my personal experience. It may not always be like this. But when I went, Icebreaker didn't have very good operations. And I'm going based on my experience, guys. My experience with Icebreaker. So, yeah, not really too good of operations. And the employees didn't seem like they knew what they were doing. They needed to, like, call someone to help them. So it was probably like a trainee or something. But for operations, I'm going to be giving a six. Now we have our final category, and that's park it's located at. Icebreaker is located at SeaWorld Orlando, which is a great park to go to for any enthusiast. There's a bunch of other attractions besides Icebreaker, like Mako, Kraken, and of course Manta which are all solid attractions. But there's a bunch of experiences as well. There's, like, um, water rides and stuff. There's a bunch of th shows you can look at. There's a bunch of sea life. And there's this awesome show called Orca Encounter. Basically, the reason I have this category here is, like, how out of your way do you have to go? Will there be anything else you could do at the park that would be worth it? And yes, guys, it is totally worth it to go to SeaWorld Orlando to ride Icebreaker because there's a bunch of other things you can do. So for Perk it's located at, I'm going to be giving a 9. So for Icebreaker's final score, the final score for Icebreaker is a 7.5. This coaster isn't perfect, but no coaster is perfect. This coaster targets more of a family audience. And yeah, that's really just this coaster, guys. My personal score for Icebreaker is a 7. I don't 
like it as much as other people will like it. I love those strong airtime moments, though. Without those airtime moments, I would not like this coaster. Um, yeah. So that's going to wrap up our review, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And we will be beginning our VelociCoaster segment in just a couple of days with three whole videos about VelociCoaster. And yeah, so remember, guys, stay on the thrill side of life.